Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Brisman, and I'm going to speak to you today on the subject of glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia, or vago glossopharyngeal neuralgia, is a very rare condition that can cause severe pain in the face. The pain is usually felt in the deep throat, tonsil, or deep ear areas in the sensory distribution of the ninth and tenth cranial nerves. It's very similar in nature to trigeminal neuralgia, another condition that causes facial pain. However, the pain is in the distribution of the ninth and 10th nerves. So whereas trigeminal neuralgia will cause pain in the trigeminal distribution from the top of the head to the jaw, the forehead, the eye, the cheek, the jaw area, glossopharyngeal neuralgia will cause pain in the tonsil, deep throat, and deep ear. In glossopharyngeal neuralgia, the pains are sharp, severe, brief electric shock or stabbing pains that come on suddenly, last a brief period, go away suddenly, and are often triggered by stimulation in the areas of the ninth and 10th nerves, such as swallowing, coughing, sensation, the deep ear. And these pains will often be responsive to anti-seizure medicines, particularly Tegretol or Trileptol, and possibly Neurontin or Lyrica. So in nature, the symptoms of glossopharyngeal neuralgia are very, very similar to trigeminal neuralgia, again, except that it involves the ninth and 10th nerve distribution instead of the fifth nerve distribution. So the first is it's critical to diagnose this illness. Glossopharyngeal neuralgia is about a 70th as common as trigeminal neuralgia, so much rarer. Usually the workup would involve an MRI of the brain to make sure there was no mass or growth against the glossopharyngeal nerve, and a fine-cut MRI might show contact of a blood vessel, a small artery or vein, against the ninth or 10th cranial nerves, which is the presumed cause of glossopharyngeal neuralgia. The first-line treatment will be medicines, Tegretol, Trileptol, Neurontin, or Lyrica. These will usually be effective. Also, one of the features of this disease, like trigeminal neuralgia, is that people can have spontaneous remissions. So a person can have the problems on and off, and then it can go away for weeks, months, or years. It can also come back, though. If the person is having severe pain despite the medicines, then a procedure can be considered. There are two major types of procedures. One procedure involves an operation uh, that's done under general anesthesia, where we make an incision behind the ear, remove a small piece of the skull bone, and then under the microscope explore the ninth and 10th cranial nerves. Again, this disease can really be caused by symptoms of the ninth or 10th or both nerves, so it's important to consider both. At surgery, if we do not find a blood vessel, we will usually just cut the ninth nerve and the very upper fibers of the 10th nerve. If, however, we find a clear blood vessel compressing the ninth or 10th nerve, then we can consider either moving that blood vessel away and interposing between the blood vessel and the nerve a tiny sponge, or we can still go ahead and cut the ninth and upper portion of the tenth nerves. This is often effective and can be curative, though again it is an operation. There is a small risk associated with an operation. The other consideration for treatment involves a nerve injury. We can, if we injure the nerve a little bit, the ninth and tenth nerves, we can relieve the pain. And this is somewhat similar to the algorithm or the treatment options for trigeminal neuralgia as well. The ninth and 10th nerves can be injured uh, by doing a super-focused radiation procedure or gamma knife stereotactic radiosurgery. This is a much less invasive procedure than the other operation I described. It is an outpatient procedure that involves super-focused radiation on the ninth and 10th nerve roots. This can also effectively relieve the pain, though it can take several weeks to work. It's also possible with this procedure that a person may still need a little bit of medicine uh, after the procedure as well for complete pain relief. Another procedure that had been used in the past involved putting a needle into the cheek and threading it into the ninth and 10th nerves and injuring them. However, it was difficult to selectively injure the sensory portion of the 10th nerve and not also injure the motor portion, which is important for swallowing uh, and maintaining normal voice. As a result, I do not offer this procedure and I think most people have moved away from it. So in summary, this is a glossopharyngeal neuralgia or vago glossopharyngeal neuralgia is a rare condition. 
It's important to make a correct diagnosis. First line treatment is with medicines, but if medicines don't work, there are procedures that can be very effective, including the open procedure or the gamma knife procedure. Thank you.